think about it There's nothing in this world that we can't do Flowers even mad about it Cause they can't blow like you don't I don't see a way around it Cause everything has led me straight to you It's nothing new Baby, I'm outside Be thinking about you all night Be thinking it ain't right if you and me Only see us in our dreams What's up guys, it's me again. Welcome back, finally, to another video. I'm currently in Scarborough right now, parking at the Toronto Pan Am Center. I just want to head over to school. I have a shipment of THP1s, which is a human macrophage cell line that's coming in today. So I'm gonna to try to take care of that, uh, do a little bit of culture, and then prepare some for some experiments, because uh, since they're here, I can start doing a little bit of um, killing assays and start doing some cool stuff. But you know, this is probably new because I haven't talked about much about my current research project that I just started about a couple weeks ago. Uh, so I'm gonna get into that a little bit later. But first of all, um, I don't want these cells to start dying on me. So I'm gonna head off to campus right now and pick them up. I'm done and waiting for you, waiting for you. Baby, I'm outside, been thinking about you all night. Be thinking it ain't right if you and me only see us in our dreams. I'm outside. Be thinking that you're all night. Be thinking it ain't right if you and me only see us in our dreams. I'm outside. Okay, so I just finished culturing up these THP1 macrophages that came in from another lab. So basically how that, that entire process works of kind of culturing cells is they come in frozen. Usually they come in stored in liquid nitrogen, but in this case, they were just stored in a little bit of this solution called DMSO, uh, the growth medium, which is usually RPMI plus a little bit of like FBS. And that's like in a very, very tiny vial that contains very, very few cells. And like everything and like everyone, we end up growing in a little bit. And so these vials come in, I have to defrost them and then mix it in a couple of different things. And eventually I'll be able to kind of expand them or grow them in culture. And that's what I'll be doing for the next couple of days, kind of growing them out. But while I have you guys here, I'm currently in the, lab, uh, the office of my lab. Uh, I just wanted to really talk to you guys about what it's like being in research. So uh, wet lab research, I know is very, very hard to come by. I know a lot of people have asked me about like, how to get into that. And that's going to be another video coming up. But I've had a wet lab experience now for around like uh, over, a little bit over one semester. Uh, the past semester I've been shadowing one of the students and kind of working on her project. But this one I get a very unique opportunity as an undergrad uh, to work on my own project. And so this is funded by the Lead Law Scholarship at the University of Toronto. Uh, and I'm able to kind of propose a project uh, within my lab and carry it out like full time basically for the course of the summer. And that's really what I've been doing or starting to do uh, pretty recently. I'm like super fortunate to have this opportunity and I do not take it for granted at all. And I just wanna like give back and kind of share all the research advice and kind of tips on how I got started in research. Um, but before I even make a whole entire video dedicated to that, I just wanna to talk to you a little bit about what it's like uh, currently and kind of debunking the misconceptions of research. And so a lot of times people think like, oh yeah, research, I know this is what I thought in the beginning, but it was full of experiments. Like that's all you do. There's like countless of experiments one after another and everything is like all figured out like the lab has protocols in place and things to follow it's kind of running like a high school slash university lab uh, but in reality a lot of research is figuring things out on your own especially if you're running your own project or assisting on something where you have like a little bit like a lot of responsibility such as uh, what i did past semester and so it's very interesting to see what that's like and a lot of times it's really due to like reading like, reading a lot of things or going through a lot of papers getting informed about what's currently out there in the research landscape and you know a lot a lot of troubleshooting and that's like a very big part of research I didn't really expect like there's a lot of times when you would do an experiment things would go perfectly you follow all the steps which is kind of a must you probably have to do that if you want to get into research and then things still don't get 
still don't still don't um, go the way you want. Basically, there's still some things that are missing. There's some results that they're not quite sure why are happening, and so there's a lot of troubleshooting there. And having those type of skills is something that you can develop uh, early on, uh, even prior to getting into research. Now, you're probably going to ask me like, how do I develop these troubleshooting skills and things that I can do to enhance my research application? So, for troubleshooting, there's a lot of there's a there's a it really comes down to uh, a little bit more of exposure and kind of learning about the different types of techniques and things that are out there on papers. And so if you're a science kid like I am and you're interested in going to research, something that I'd really recommend that you do is look at the papers that are concerning your topic of interest or the field of research that you want to go into and really go through all the parts of the paper, particularly the ones that will go to like the discussion, the results, and even sometimes even the methods if you're interested in learning about different techniques. And so that's really where the troubleshooting part comes in. So you can also see how different labs, different groups interpret the different results that they get. And that can inform the way you, uh, your research project's trajectory or the way you interpret your results. But anyways, I just wanted to come here and say that little bit of stuff. I know like research is super, super tough. I know everyone wants to get into research. Uh, let me just caution you though. If you want to get into research, make sure you're super, super passionate about it because it's really demanding uh, mentally. Uh, even physically like there have been times where I've been in the lab like if you guys checked out my Instagram you probably see me get out of the lab at around like for 3 3 a.m. sometimes when I have an exam like two days later uh, so it really be like that sometimes and I think you have to be really passionate to get into it that being said though I'm gonna be dropping lots of tips in the end like really cool stuff to help you guys uh, get into research so if you're interested in that make sure you click that subscribe button don't miss another one of my videos and I will see you all in the next one so yeah. patient, like winter, waiting for June. I'm done.